Okay, good morning everybody. It is Friday and it is the 6th. It's November 6th. Okay, so today we're going to talk about inverses. We did this very briefly in geometry. We did the uh, inverses. So to do an inverse is like the opposite But if it's the opposite of a graph, then to be the opposite of a graph, if we have any point, say some x, y, to make the opposite of it, we just switch it around to make it y, x. So that's really our definition for an inverse relation, is given any particular point, any point, x, y, to make it an inverse relation, you just rewrite it as some y comma x. Give you some examples. So let's take some examples. If I have these points, 3, 1, 4, 2, 5, 2. If we want to the inverse of that, we could switch them around. And we'd have instead of 3, 1, we're going to have, let me use a different color. So we'd have the point. 1 comma 3, we just switch. That's all we do is just switch x, y. We'd have the point, instead of 4, 2, we'd have the point 2, 4. And instead of having the point 5, 2, we'd have a point 2, 5. Okay, that's just its inverse to switch the points around. Now, the reason we call this the inverse relation instead of an inverse function, all right? What I just wrote, if I were to graph it, is not a function because you've got the x value of 2 that has two different y values, okay? So what I just did, this example here, is not a function, but it's an inverse relation, okay? So to be a function, it still has to pass the vertical line test, or it still has to be a function where every x has exactly every one, every y, okay? So to do an inverse function, we're going to take our point x, y, and we'll have this See this little negative one? That little negative one is just the symbol. That's just the symbol. That means inverse. Okay, that's the symbol. When you see this, that means inverse. That means inverse. Y comma X, except for this must be a function. Must be a function. Okay, go ahead and write that down. It has to be a function. So what we did earlier was we got an inverse relation. So the relations just switch and switch, switch, switch. But if it doesn't match up to be a function, it's not an inverse function, okay? All right, so let's take a look at example one. Let's do an inverse and see if it's a function. Okay, so start at f of x is the same thing as y, right? So we'll have a y equals f of x and y means the same thing. y is equal to a negative one-third x plus six, right? And I'm going to graph that. And that's not going to be too hard to graph. Um, I'm going to try and use different colors. It's going to help me out if I use different colors. So I'll graph this one in purple. Okay, so I'll start at 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. Y-intercept of 6. And I'm going to go down 1 because of slope over 3. Down 1 over 3. <coughs> down 1 over 3. Okay. I'm going to graph that in. There it is. I need a ruler, but that'll work until I find a ruler. Okay. Now, to do its inverse, one way to do it is to take all of these points. Like that's the point zero, 06. That's the point 3, 5. That's the point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 4. And that's the point 9, 3. Okay. So to get and graph its inverse, I could just switch these points around. So the inverse points, let's see, let's see, I'm going to go and have a 0, 6, or a 6, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0. Instead of a 3, 5, I'm going to have a 5, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3. Instead of a 6, 4, I'm going to have a 4, 6, right? Switch it around. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 
two, three, four, five, six. Instead of a nine, three, let's make it a three, nine. Let's see, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine up here, okay? And then if I graph that in, oh, I need a ruler. Let's see, maybe do it like this. Pretty, pretty lousy looking ruler, huh? There we go, that'll work. So, here's my inverse. So let's call that F inverse of X, okay? So that's the symbol, here's my line. Okay, now what's the equation? Well, to do the equation, we need the equation that's inverse. What we do is we switch x's and y's, okay? And we're going to switch it to y comma x. So I'm going to take my equation with my regular function, y equals negative one-third x plus 6, and if I need the inverse equation, I'm going to switch the values. So I'm going to take, make y into x and x into y. It's that easy. So I'm going to rewrite this as x equals a negative one-third y plus 6. Okay, switch them around. Now what I really want to do is solve for y so it has a form of like y equals mx plus b so I can graph it. All right, we want to solve for y, so give myself a little star here on the side. We still need to solve or y, okay? So I switched them, all right? I switched them. And now I'm gonna solve for y, okay? So let's do that. So to solve for y, here's y. First, let's get rid of the six, minus six, minus six, I'll have an x minus six equals a negative one-third y. I'm going to Multiply by 3 on both sides. Multiply by 3, because if I multiply by 3, 3's cancel. Multiply this side by 3, and then I'll have a 3x minus 18 equals a negative 1y. Then finally, I'll just divide by negative 1, because I want y by itself. Divide by negative 1, everything. Divide everything by negative 1. So as an answer, y equals, let's see, that's a positive 18 minus a 3 over 1x. Now let me write it up here because it's the inverse. So instead of writing y, I'm going to write f inverse, f inverse of x, okay? So let's write a y, let's write f inverse, okay? Equals, well, here's my equation, negative 3x plus 18. Is this a function? Well, heck yeah, it's a function. Take a look at it. Take a look at the red graph. Of course, it's a function. Every x has exactly one y. It is a function, so it is an inverse function. So here's the equation of the inverse of this graph. Here's the inverse graph. Now, if it is the opposite, check this out. This y-intercept now becomes an x-intercept. And believe it or not, this y-intercept becomes an x-intercept here, okay? All right, let me keep going with this. Turn the page. All right now, example two. I want to graph x squared minus y, nine and its inverse. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, and I'm going to use a pencil because I kind of know where I'm going with this. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and start down at negative nine for my y-intercept. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I know that it's a parabola. I'm going to go 1, 1. Remember doing this? 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, it's parabola, so it's symmetrical, right? Here we go. Here we go. There we go. Okay, all right. Something like this. All right. So a long time ago, we talked about a thing called the vertical line test. Okay, is it a function? Yes, because every time I try and pass through the graph, I only hit it once. I hit it once, okay? So a vertical line test tells me if this is a function. X value only has one Y value. Every X value has one Y value. But to be an inverse, to be an inverse, it must pass the horizontal line test. 
I mean it's like this. So that's going to fail. You can see it. If I draw a line straight across, boom, hits it twice. Boom, hits it twice. Boom, hits it twice. Boom, hits it twice. Boom. So this graph does not have an inverse. Does not. So this graph, x squared minus 9, does not have an inverse. It doesn't. Okay. But what if I want an inverse? Well, what I'm going to do, if I really want to make sure this has an inverse, is I have to get rid of part of the graph. So believe it or not, I'm just going to take my eraser, erase this back half, just erase, 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 erase this back half. Okay, there you go, erase this back half. Now, all I have is this part of the graph. Now, hey, this is a math class. You just can't erase things. You have to make a statement. So I'm going to do a domain change. I'm going to do a domain change. Domain, I'm going to fix the domain. How do I do that? Well, I'm going to say let's let x be greater than or equal to 0. Okay, here's my x-axis, right? And I'm starting at 0 and only letting x be greater than or equal to 0. That's that half the graph. No negatives. So x is greater than or equal to 0. Gets rid of this back half. So I had to change the domain to allow an inverse. Okay, great. Now I know it has an inverse because this will pass the horizontal line test. So let's figure out what the inverse is. So the inverse, well, let's do it point by point. So first of all, we'll do it point by point. This point is at 0, negative 9. This point's at 1, negative 8. This point's at 2, negative 5. This point's at 3, 0, and that's probably all we need, okay? So to make an inverse, I've got all, I've got a few points, right? And to do the inverse, let's switch them around, okay? Let's switch x and y, so I'll have a negative 9, 0, right? Switch it around to make an inverse. Switch it around, make an inverse, negative 8, 1. Switch it around, negative 5, 2. Switch it around, 0, 3. Okay, now, if that's the case, let's graph it. All right, I can graph that, negative 9, 0. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, cool. Negative 8, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1. Negative 5, 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 0, 3. And I'm going to graph that in. Now, there is no graph down here because there's no graph here. I'll say it again. There is no graph over here because there's no graph over here. So what happens is something I want us to learn is that there is a reflection line. I don't know if you can see it, but if you were to reflect my function over this line, it folds on to its inverse. I, mean, I don't know if you can do it. I just pick this up and go like this. Let's see if I just pick this up and fold it right along this line. It folds right onto itself. So this is the line y equals x. And that's my line of symmetry, okay, for this graph because it is symmetrical. That's my line of symmetry. Okay. Awesome. That will always happen. In fact, if I take a look at my other notes, the ones that we took away, check it out. Here is my And y equals x, and I don't know if you can see this, but if you fold it, fold it, and then take and fold it over that line, fold it onto itself, and that's the line y equals x. Okay, let's go back to the second question, okay? So now what about the equation of this graph, okay? What about the equation? Well, let's do the same thing. What we had to do was we had to switch x and y. So my original equation was y equals x squared minus 9, right? So if I need the equation, let's just switch x and y. So we're going to switch x and y to y and x. So I'm going to rewrite this as x equals x squared minus uh, y squared, my bad, y squared minus 9. And now let's solve again. I'm going to solve for y. All right, so plus 9 plus 9, right? Plus 9 plus 9. I've got an x plus 9 equals y squared. And to get rid of the square, I'm going to go square root, square root. Now normally there's a plus or minus. Normally there's two answers, but 
We're only going to take the positive answer because there's no graph down here. So we're going to just say the answer is the square root of x plus 9 equals y. Okay, or, or f inverse is equal to the square root of x plus 9. Now, if I were to graph this on my phone using Desmos, let's see what it looks like. Hold on. Let me get my Desmos out. And I like Desmos. Hold on. Uh, Desmos, Desmos, Desmos. Let's check it out. So I can graph this here. So if I graph uh, y equals a square root of x plus 9. There it is. Okay. If I graph the other one, y equals x squared minus 9. The problem is, is that I can't have that. I know there's a way to change this, but to change the domain, I just have to figure that out. But anyway, there they are. So homework today is out of the journal. You're going to be looking at inverses. Um, I know you can do it, and then I will talk to you on Monday or Tuesday. Okay, that's all I got.